we're staying in a dorm room in a hostel basically dead center in the middle of the old city in Jerusalem and this is what it looks like. And it's kind of strange because you kind of feel like you're going into a cave and I don't fit standing here like the way that this is. I don't know it looks really weird but like that's it. I have to crouch over to get up these stairs and these little kids run the place. Hello. Hello. I'm all right. I'm fine. And we are staying in this dorm room, and I think there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen beds in here. And, but look at it. It's like a cave. Like, literally. And this is where we're sleeping. And I'm up top. And. It's a bit like being in a prison, and a bit like being in a cave, but it's actually pretty clean in here, so it's not too bad. And you have this hole here that goes outside. I don't know why. Sometimes it leaks water. Like there was a big puddle and a dead cockroach right there this morning. Whatever. The bathrooms are nice, and it's a decent place. It's a little overpriced. These two beds are costing us $30, like total, for both of them. A little less than that, but it's a little bit of a kick in the pants. Oh well. Okay, so this is the west wall, and it is basically what is supposedly the remains of the second temple, and that makes it very important to the Jewish population. And it's very, very common. Right now, there's not very many people here, but it's kind of late at night. But I mean, we've seen huge crowds here of people here just praying, and they come and they kind of like sometimes they kiss or they lean against the wall and they pray. Apparently there's a specific verse that they like to repeat that has something to do with it, but of course I have no idea. And um, this is actually kind of of importance as well to Muslims, but you never see anybody here. Apparently Muhammad tethered uh, his winged horse here, I'm assuming before he ascended to heaven, which was supposedly very near here. So I'm not 100% sure of the story on that either. but. It's a very important place for a lot of people, so it's an interesting thing to see. And um, you can see that um, it's separated in sexes. Men are over here, there's a wall over here, and the women go over there. And um, they have just stands so people can come and read religious texts, and they can just sit back. And it seems to be sort of a social thing to a certain degree, where people will sit and they will be um, just chatting and meeting and things like that. So it's. Uh, it's an interesting thing, and again, it's inside of old Jerusalem, and it is, uh, you just see a lot of a lot of Jewish people walking towards it constantly, and <laughs> as you can see, this is where they tend to congregate. But uh, it's cool to see it, and it is apparently open 24 hours a day. So, if you want to come here in the middle of the night, get you some uh, West Wall prayers in, no problemo. Something instantly noticeable in Israel is how many um, different police forces and military forces and things there are. Like there's so many different uniforms and so many people and as you can see, this guy here is got, it's actually two guys that are riding this BMW motorcycle and they both have like assault rifle, machine gun type things. Or at least one does, the guy in the back did. And, um, I mean, you see a lot of really weird things, like you'll see like girls that look like they're 18 with like, you know, these assault rifles. I'll put a picture of one in right here if I, if I remember. And um, you see a lot of, I mean, this is a lot of security. I mean, it was expected, but it's just bizarre. I didn't realize that it was, this, I mean, it's like police forces and so many different branches or something. I mean, there's so many different uniforms. It's really bizarre. Um, this is, again, kind of like the new area of the city. And it's just kind of very European feeling and there are just people like street performers but not like, you know, there's beggars but not a lot of them. But like this guy's actually got a skill. Uh, I'm playing this like um, folk guitar style thing. I don't even know what it is. I'm sure it's some sort of Middle Eastern instrument or something. Anyways, um, I just want to note the security force stuff. It's just really strange. The other thing. Well, you see a lot of a lot of them are in plain clothes. Like when at the border crossing, you come in, it's just like a guy, he looks like he's like 12. I mean, of course, it's like 18 or something. But 
and he's in like, you know, his street clothes and he's got, you know, an assault rifle. Assault rifle. It's really strange. Okay, so this situation is pretty funny. This guy here is really, really unbelievable at his instrument. He's been here for quite some time. And about 10, 15 minutes ago, this lady came over here and set up. And she's got a harp and a guitar and this obnoxious flute she's really bad at. I mean, it sounds like a third grader playing a recorder. And like, he sounds like, you know, essentially a classically trained musician. And she's just playing over him. Like she just sat down and set up and when she was playing the harp, it was all really, really, really distorted and sounded awful. And she kept turning it up and made it worse. And he is like, kind of like been making remarks to her. Like, how about you give me until eight o'clock or whatever. And she was like, okay. And then she just started playing again. And he is starting to play more and more aggressive. You can just tell he's pissed off. <laughs> The whole thing's pretty funny. She really is just an awful musician, too. <laughs> she has broken out the ukulele and started up the home on the range. <laughs> so here's an odd one. I've been walking around tonight without Katie because she's just hanging out back of the room. And, I mean, everybody always tells me I look Jewish, and I'm not really convinced. But every time I talk to somebody who is, they speak to me directly in Hebrew, even though they speak English. So they just assume that I'm, you know, fluent. And I'm just always like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think if I had my beard growing out, I'd probably just be swept right into the club. <laughs> So I'm on the outside of the old city, just barely, like it's right up there. I guess you can't see the wall where I'm standing, but anyway, so here we go, it's right there. But look at all these tour groups. I mean, this is madness. All these people get like pumped into the old city and they get drug around and shown a few things and they make it a big pain in the ass to walk around because they're in these massive groups. So if they stop, it's just like, everything is like completely blocked up in there. <laughs> it's nuts. I mean, talk about super, super touristy stuff. Um, lots of package tourists, obviously. I mean, just the buses, like you can see traffic is stopped like from the top of this hill all down here. Traffic is just like completely gridlocked because all these buses letting all these people out. So I think if I was a local, I'd be pretty, pretty annoyed with it. Okay, so I am hiking up the Mount of Olives. Um, as you can see, there's the Dome of the Rock and that is the old city and this is a basically from what i'm reading a jewish cemetery and um there's like 150,000 people buried here at least it's kind of a rough estimate because some of these some of these graves have been here a very 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 long time um it says that during, between 1948 and 1967 this whole area was under jordanian rule and during that time the jordanian king like approved like construction projects and stuff in this area that destroyed a lot of the graves and um, wonder if that has a little bit to do with the ambition that the Israelis had to take this land back just because of the desecration of all the, the funerary areas so um, I'm gonna hike up there and you can see there's a massive tour group up here and they probably have a pretty good view of the city so I'm gonna see what that's all about and on the way I'm gonna hang out with a whole bunch of dead Jews all right, so I'm up at the top of one of the peaks. I guess there's three peaks of the mountain, Mount of Olives, or whatever it's called. And um, this is, again, this is a Jewish cemetery below me, and it goes all the way down the hill. I mean, it's a, quite, a, quite a large area it covers. And if you look across over here, this is a Muslim cemetery on the other side of the street, and that's a little closer to the walls of the old city. And you can see the walls of the old city kind of running along this way. And going out and it's a, it's a square it goes around uh, the area like like I said in a square format and um, you can see the temple of the dome of the temple of the rock or whatever it's called and um, it's it sticks out and it's pr probably pretty much the most like recognizable feature of the city aside from the shape of it itself and um, like I said in the past the city is broken into four pieces four quarters and uh, it's difficult to explain from up here but I think what's closest to us, kind of this direction, is the Jewish Quarter. 
and then over this direction is the Muslim quarter, the far corner over there is the Christian quarter, and the far back corner this way is the Armenian quarter. So it gives you, I mean, it's kind of a rough a rough outline of where things are. Sometimes you can tell when you cross over from one area to the other, but sometimes it just, it's kind of difficult to kind of look a little bit the same, or maybe I don't know what I'm looking at. But um, and then you can see the rest of Jerusalem. It expands outside of the old city, which is quite a quite a big city. It goes out around it and out on the hills and stuff. There's stuff and behind this. Behind this, on the other side, is like the new city where like all the posh ship stuff is. I go there at nighttime and just people watch. So um, gives you a, kind of an idea of what everything looks like. And I imagine 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, when this was a hip happened in place, it looked a lot different. So I just read in my book that where I'm sitting, this area, is where God will redeem the dead on the day of judgment when the Messiah returns. So um, if he shows up, uh, he's going to have a lot of tourists to elbow his way to the front of the crowd with. So him and all the zombies are going to have a hell of a time. Uh, I hope they get better transportation than the buses and the gridlock traffic because it could delay things a bit and you know, you'd hate to have your day of judgment delayed. That'd be a pain in the ass. So it is interesting to sit here and think about that, um, that belief though. It's, uh, it's a good view, but I don't know if it's that good. I'm now standing directly below the city, facing the opposite direction I was facing in the previous videos. And I was sitting up there before looking in this direction. So the city is behind me. And as you can see, this is the Jewish cemetery and there's a little big area and they are doing excavations, it looks like. And I didn't realize that there were things like this in this area, like almost Petra-esque looking, like things built into the walls. And maybe they're excavating those, and I really don't think my guidebook says anything about them, so I don't know what they are, but they look really old, and um, I'm sure they're of some sort of importance to somebody. You can also see underneath the graveyard, there's like a cave over here, which is kind of interesting as well. And up on the Mount of Olives, which is this whole region over here, there's like a lot of churches and um, I went looking for a couple of them and it's really steep. So as I didn't find them on the way down, I decided I'm never going to go back up there because of the hike. And that's that. So no churches for me on the Mount of Olives, but you can see a couple of them are kind of neat looking. That almost looks like a Russian Orthodox church or something, but the, you know, the, the tops are gold instead of colorful. And it looks pretty interesting. I wish I could have figured out how to get in, but I believe it's closed right now. And then there's one over here, and they've got like a giant mural essentially, but I think it's made of stone on the front. And maybe it's painted, maybe it's made of stone. I don't know, I can't see it that well. And um, again, there's, this, there's a bunch of them over here. And like apparently one of these churches is on the site where Jesus ascended to heaven, but I, see I don't understand this stuff because I thought he died and was resurrected like in the old city and it wasn't the old city then, but they expanded the walls and I don't know. <laughs> this whole area is definitely, um, seems like nobody can get a straight answer out of exactly where they think things actually happen. So if you ask one guy, you get a different answer from another guy. So take it all for what it's worth, I suppose. Okay, so I did a little research. This is the Pillar of Absalom, I believe that's the pronunciation. And it is the tomb of King David's son. So it's from the first century. So that's a uh, really old pillar and I'm assuming that's what this is I don't have any idea what this is perhaps it's just a conjoined effort or something but um, kind of interesting I mean kind of this is again right outside of the walls like old city outside and it looks like they're doing excavations or something like it's really what it seems like to me and um, not very often you see a construction site that's covered like this, so I think that, that might might be a part of it. And I mean, I, I hate to say it, but like with all of the horrible things that take place in the name of this area, there are some pretty gorgeous things. Like it's pretty cool just walking around the outside of this and just looking at this, knowing what it is. By request of Gene, I believe this is the Dung Gate. This is an example of gridlock because of these groups of tourists. This is like, just like a million of them all in one place. Oy. 
Okay, so I think we're in St. Anne's Church, but it's just like a hallway. And then the Pool of Bethesda, I don't even know what this is, is back over there. But they want $2 for me to go back there and look at their Pool of Bethesda. And I'd rather have my $2. So I'm not going to check that out. But what makes this interesting is this is the Via Della Rosa or something. It's just where it begins. So I, apparently this is like where Jesus had to carry his cross from here to where he was crucified or condemned or however you want to put it. So um, that's supposed to be interesting. And like lots of times people will come and bring like a life-size cross and like carry it along the same path. And it's like, you know, a thing people do, like a pilgrimage type thing. So that all starts right here. But there really isn't a whole lot to see, to be honest with you, without that $2. And they're not getting it. Okay, so update on St. Anne's Church in the Pool of Bethesda. Katie has swindled our way in for free somehow. <laughs> she, flashed her, she flashed her pretty eyes at the guard. <laughs> and here we are. So this is actually St. Anne's, um, Anne's Church. And apparently this is where the Virgin Mary's parents lived in this area. And um, so this is where she was knocked up by God, <laughs> assumingly. Let's check it out. This is the actual church. The acoustics are supposed to be really good in here. Oh, wow. The reverb in here is bananas. <laughs> so this stairwell comes down here and there's a sign up there that says this is our mother's, or our lady's birthplace. So maybe this is where they think that the Virgin Mary was born. I don't know, the whole building's pretty neat though. Nativity of our lady. Hmm. Katie's down here signing her yearbook. She's gonna say, it was been a good year. Keep in touch. Call me over the summer. <laughs> so here's a group of people that are taking the walk with the cross. You can see that it's a large group of people. And um, they have a full-size cross and they'll carry it all the way over to the whole Church of the Holy Sepicular. Sep What's it called? Church of the Holy what? Sepulcher. 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 Or maybe they'll stop here. I don't know. Apparently there's markers that explain like stories about Jesus' life along the route, but I haven't looked at any of them yet, so I can't verify. So here's a couple of like Israeli security force uh, members, and um, they've just been standing here doing their thing and checking out girls and that type of thing. And as you can see, they've got, you know, assault rifles. <laughs> And a few minutes ago, a guy was just walking down the street. I mean, like, a thousand people have walked by since we've been sitting here easily. And a guy walking down the street was just, like, the guy stepped out in front of him and was like, stop. And he was like, yeah, you know, he asked him for his ID. And he checked the guy's ID. And the guy was, the, the, the fellow they stopped was a Palestinian. I saw his uh, Palestinian ID card. And they just questioned him for a couple minutes and then left. So, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, no wonder these people are pissed off. Like, you're just walking down the road and all of a sudden you gotta get interrogated by a man with an assault rifle. Um, another note, there, whenever you see any Israeli security force, police or military or anything, they are always in groups of two. Like, always. You never see just like a cop walking on the street. It does not happen. Even on motorcycles, they share the two people to a motorcycle. So, I mean, I guess it's, you know, watch each other's back type of thing. So this is the kind of the residential-ish area of the Jewish quarter. And as you can see, it's a lot more calm and just like, it's a lot newer. It was all destroyed in 1948. And I don't think they started rebuilding it until like 1967, 1968. So it's all pretty, pretty new comparatively. And um, there's a synagogue up here that is pretty cool looking. And ta -da, here it is. That's a uh, pretty cool find. We've just been kind of lost and we just came across this. And it says it is the Mara, can't read it. Marambon, Marambon Synagogue. 
Okay, so we just went through security to get to the Temple Mount or Dome of the Rock, whatever you want to call it. And now we're walking through this thing, and I feel like I'm going to get on one of those wooden roller coasters at King's Dominion. I feel like there's going to be a train at the end of this. A train? <laughs> like you're in India? No, like we're in the Holocaust. Uh oh. <laughs> There is a lot of security in here already. <laughs> we probably walked past 10, 11 security guards in the last two minutes. And I can see a couple more in the compound. So, uh, see a lot of see a lot of assault rifles. This, my friends, the Dome of the Rock. We weren't sure whether we'd be able to get in, but after a 15 minute wait, we are in. We win. Um, we were reading while we were waiting that King Hussein, which is the uh, King of Jordan, sold one of his houses in London to help refurbish the gold topping here for the dome. It's like seven million dollars. Eight, I think. Eight. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> eight million dollars. That's one beautiful dome, baby. Okay, so what is this? That's the question everybody has mind, right? Um, it is a very religious and holy place for both Muslims and Jewish people. And um, the Muslims, basically, there's a, there's a slab under there, underneath this building. And we're not allowed to go inside, but it's just a slab of rock. And it's apparently where they believe that Muhammad ascended to heaven. And um, I'm not really clear on why this is such an important place for Jewish people. That one's a little in the air for me, but I think it has something to do with it being like uh, kind of the meeting place between heaven and earth for people, for like your soul or something, but I'm not, don't, don't write home about that. I do know that the slab of rock that apparently Muhammad ascended to heaven off of, or nearby, or whatever, has got a hole in it, and some people call it the pierce stone, and it goes down into like some sort of like catacomb type structure, but I don't know the significance of any of that or anything either. <laughs> you can tell I've done a lot of research, but I've read a lot lately the last few days and it is just like about so many different religion things that it's just beginning to all like meld together in my mind. So if you wanna know more about it, just Wikipedia it. But um, it looks like a mosque, but it's not a mosque. And um, I believe that this little thing here is a mosque. So this is just considered just like a, um, it's a place for pilgrims to be able to come and go inside and get out of the weather and just for them to come celebrate being Muslim, not actually for prayer. Um, I'm not sure if people use it for a prayer now, but that was the original intention. Um, and uh, it is the, according to Wikipedia, oldest Muslim uh, building in the world. It was built in, I think, 681. So, I mean, that's not too long after Muhammad left off that rock. So. Um, it is it is really old and apparently it's older than even the stuff in Mecca, which I kind of found interesting But hey, what do I know about Islamic history? So that's it and it is very iconic and you can see it from like everywhere around on the Mount of Olives and everything around so it's just like the iconic spot of, um, of Jerusalem as far as things, you know, I mean, it looks really flashy and it really sticks out So that's what people think of when they think of the city to a certain degree so we're basically in like one of the most controversial sites in the world and I mean to the point of violently controversial and right off over this little ledge right here every couple of minutes you can hear the very distinct sound of a gunshot going off and it just ricochets through all the hills so that's very comforting. All right, so down here is apparently where the Virgin Mary lived and then died. And somewhere on this site where this church is now built, there is also where I guess the Last Supper was supposed to have been had. And they've got a cafeteria, so maybe we'll have some food. But um, these people just broke into song. So let's check this out. They started singing as soon as Katie came down, so maybe they're singing to her.
So we went inside the uh, Dormition Abbey here, and the cafeteria is a bust. Like, they have Snickers bars, but they're like $3. So if you want to have your last supper here, you're going to need to bring a chunk of change, is all I'm saying. The man in the Shirako does not like the boy on the donkey. In case you're wondering, the Armenian quarter doesn't really stick out as any different than the Jewish quarter. And to the point of where I think I'm in the Jewish quarter now, but I'm not even sure. So, I mean, it's, it exists apparently in theory, but I couldn't look at it and tell the difference. So here is the old city for reference, and they're building a electric train system that goes from the old city to the new city. And I'm not sure where else it goes, but if you want to go from the old city, you walk out the Damascus Gate and follow the tracks, and you are in the heart of the new city. And it'll be kind of nice, I think, because then I wouldn't have to walk up this hill, but it doesn't seem like that big of a hindrance to walk up the hill. So if it's cheap, if it's like a shekel or something to get on it and ride it, it's probably something I would do. If it's like five shekels or six and a half or whatever they charge for the bus, I'd just walk. So. It'll be useful if it's priced right, but um, well, this I pointed out, it's kind of interesting to see something above ground with a rail system these days being built. Hey Gene, if you're interested in the camel ride, you can come here and do it too. You don't gotta go all the way to Jordan.